to my dog, Prim, and she is very empty, aren't you? You may hear her little feet running around every once in a while, or her drinking water, or her chewing food, you know, like any other dog. So, I just wanted to introduce you to her. Say hi, Prim. And I do have full online classes. You can find them over there at my website at kellylynart.com where I have over 2,500 students in 85 different countries and over 24 online classes that have lifetime access. So head over there and check those out. I'm looking in the wrong spot. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I have new videos every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you click that subscribe button and click the little bell and you'll never miss one. So hey guys, welcome to another episode of Creating with Kelly. And so since you've met Prim, my dog, I wanted to give a little shout out to Sid and her dog, Molly. Hi, Molly. <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube and you have this on TV, now Sid tells me that Molly absolutely loves my YouTube channel and watches me, so I had to say hello to Molly. So what we're gonna do today is work on a tile. Now this is not really a completed painting, but I just wanna give you guys an idea of how alcohol inks work. And I know a lot of folks have um, issues with it kind of just blooming everywhere on them. They can't quite grasp that, um, I guess, what do you call it? the more detailed paintings or um, they just it just runs away with them. <laughs> so I'm going to really take this one slow and just really show you here on this tile and you're going to maybe want to hurt me afterward but I'm going to wipe this thing right off. I just want to show you that you can clean a tile off at the very end. So this is not anything really fancy. This is just a real basic YouTube video. So I have blending solution in it, and you guys know that I don't use the blending solution a whole lot, but I just want to show you how it works here because it it really does extend that dry time with your alcohol inks. Alcohol inks will dry so much faster without it. So depending on what look you're going for, it may work for you or against you. So this, you're going to see how long it takes for this to dry here. So I am using the colors in this one in case you want to know. Uh, cloudy blue, salmon, I think it's salmon pink or shell pink. Um, I can't read my bottle on here and I did this one a while ago, so I, I apologize. But also willow, that was the other one. So those three colors and I've just dropped them in here along with that blending solution and you can see they're just kind of hanging out. They're getting a little blurry. And this is what I like to call wet and wet with alcohol inks. You may have heard me say this before. So you can see that I could take this little brush and just move these inks around. Ha! <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear Prim's little feet. <laughs> She's moving right now. <laughs> oh, no, she just laid down. All right. So this, you can take your brush and just maneuver through here to create these little squiggles if you want. Now you may have seen my dragonfly course online and this is similar to what we did on that to give it that, that wispy look. And it just takes that cloudy blue and just kind of drags it through those lighter colors. So you can see how it's just really easy to make textures and marks in here. Now this is still really wet. This does not want to dry anytime soon. So this is really good for those people that are, I want to say not more of a perfectionist, but you, you know, you don't really know where you're going with something and you want to take your time with it. So this using the alcohol ink blending solution really gives you that time. Now you've seen a lot of my other videos where you're always like, Kelly, slow down. You're moving too fast. <laughs> and that's because I have to work quickly because it dries quickly. So if you want to slow things down, you can use a blending solution. It does tend to make things very soft. As you can see, this background is very soft and I'm still going with this. This has been, what, about a minute now? And you can see it still has not dried yet. So let's try adding a, a color to this. So as I said before, this is wet. We're going to put a drop in here with a willow. So you see how that really blooms out. Now I'm going to try to shape this into a leaf shape. And I do have a video on leaves and dots. If you guys want to check that out, I'll put the link up here on the right-hand side if you haven't seen that before. 
that was one of my earlier videos. But these are the similar colors that I used in there. Actually, the, there's a dragonfly that I did with these colors too. I'll pop that link in there for you as well, <laughs> just in case you're interested. So you can see that this is blooming. You see where the ring around there, that is still moving. So what that did was it pushed those other colors out of the way. And you can see this is shrinking. My little leaf here is shrinking away. So we're gonna leave that for a second and then we're gonna take just a Q-tip here and lift some of this ink off. So you can kind of work around with it, shape it up, but I'm gonna tell you it's not gonna stay. Why? Because it's still wet. So you will watch here while I'm making these little marks of a leaf shape that you look at the first few, they're already beginning to fade and look at that little leaf on the left hand side there. What was a leaf? It's now, I don't even know what that is, a little, little green blob. <laughs> which is almost gone. So again, you have to work through this, work around it. And if you want something and you want to be patient with it, this is a good way to go. So it gives you plenty of time to work in this. It does not give you a lot of perfect little details because you need to have your inks completely, almost completely dry if you want those sharp details. So this gives it that very soft look. So what are we, another minute or two into this here and it's still not dry. You can still make more shapes. So this gives you, you know, if you're trying to come up with a composition, this is a great way to do that. I know from um, a, a week, our weekly video that we had uh, questions and answers, and that was one of the uh, comments from a lot of folks that you know, they don't know where, you know, how they're going to do their composition. But really, you know, that's the beauty of inks. You can play with them and play with them, and then all of a sudden you come up with something that you really like. So you can see here, I'm, I put another dot of willow down and look at that. It's still just blooming like crazy. It's really hard to contain that even with my brush. Now you'll notice I'll make that brush mark and what that does is it gives that just a little bit of a lip so that ink wants to stay contained in that area. So you can see where the ridges have um, kind of worked their way out to the outer side there and you can see the the pink is, or the pinky orange salmon color is on the outside and the green is on the inside. So we can do this a few times and this can really give you a chance to form the area a little bit more. So those are really expanding because they're, they're wet. Now if we were to do this again in a very dry ink, it would not do that. I have something in here I'm going to Scoop that out. Lots of little things flying around today. <laughs> and if you've used inks before, you know that happens too. Especially if you've just dusted or just had the vacuum cleaner out, things just tend to fly around. And if you have pets, and I've been dragging Prim around here everywhere, so mm, that makes sense, doesn't it? So you could put little details in. Now this is starting to dry just a little bit. So you can see I can, make a little bit of a leaf pattern in the center here. And you'll notice too that I take my brush afterward. If it's not cleaning out completely, I'll wipe that off. But there, it almost gives that transparent look. Again, very watery looking. Also want to mention my Instagram page. You guys should go over there and check it out because I'm, I'm posting lots of stories and lots of new stuff that's going to be coming up. So uh, leave me a comment over there. Let me know you came over from YouTube. So let's now try a little bit more of cloudy blue. Now you can see we're now into it for a few more minutes. So things are starting to dry a little bit. Let's see how, how much that moves. It's still moving quite a bit. So this is how I know that that is still wet. Do you see how much that blooms out? Now, if this was more dry, those circles would stay more contained. And like I said in the other video, we do circles. So you could maybe check that one out. That'll help you a little bit. So you'll notice I just continue to dot on top. And this is what I'll do is I can test it really to find out if it's dry or not. And if I'm unsure, I just keep dotting. Yeah, it's still kind of wet. Still wet, still wet. So you can see, I'm not getting any definition in here at all because there, it's just it's just too wet still. 
the inks are too wet. So we're gonna let this dry so it's nice and dry and you can see where some of that has moved out. I'm gonna use this other little white tile here. These are great for paint palettes so you can clean these off afterward. So we're gonna squirt some of that same cloudy blue on here and just get the tip of our brush wet. Hey, did you guys see my new birch tree jewelry course that I just put up? That's gonna be on Skillshare. I'll give you the link to that as well. They're giving away two free premium months when you sign up. So uh, check that out. And now let's try this again. More contained. Now if I load it up with too much ink, once again, it will start to, to blend. So you wanna keep those dots a little far away from each other at first until you make sure that they're not gonna create one big circle. But you can see how you can get a lot more definition with this. Now if I were to go back in here with some more ink because that is now wet, it will tend to expand a little bit more. So this is a great opportunity for you to play and practice. So grab a tile, test it out, see how long it takes for colors to dry. And you know what? Some colors might, may vary as well. Some have a little bit different pigment. The mixatives will dry differently. It will dry differently with ink and it will dry, I mean, dry differently with um, the blending solution versus no blending solution. You may want to try it with alcohol because that can change the dynamics as well. So give it a, give it a try, play a little bit and Take some alcohol and wipe it off Ah, when you're done <laughs> and you can try it again. So I hope you enjoyed this little tidbit of information. Give me a comment down below if you found this helpful and you would like more of these type videos rather than just full demos. I know we, we like both, but uh, give me a comment down below. Let me know, yes, you like the, um, the tips and tricks and I will make sure we get some more of those out here for you as well. So here's one I did with the same background and I added some butterflies to it and that was on UFO paper. Please make sure to click that thumbs up button and I would love to have you share this. Sharing is caring. It also helps my YouTube channel grow. So I would really appreciate that too. We'll see you guys next Tuesday.